Welcome, and thanks for joining. Today, I'm in my closet, and I don't have Mike with me. Apologies all, Mike and I have been super busy the last couple of weeks. Uh, we weren't able to get together, so we're kind of we're short on videos. So I figured I'd do an emergency review for you guys, and uh, I'm going to learn how to edit a video, so probably going to suck. Just a heads up, we are uh, we're planning on getting back together and getting this you know squared away soon enough. Uh, we actually spent uh, last weekend, we couldn't get together, but we did spend, uh, I think the weekend before we couldn't, but we did spend a few days uh, down in uh, Kentucky at a 4Gate event that we got invited to, so uh, shout out to Bill and uh, Bob there at 4Gate for inviting us. Uh, really cool, and we can't wait to bring you a couple bottles that I took home. Uh, they're excellent, uh, and we'll tell you about the two we didn't take home and why we didn't buy them. Today, however, is all about this very, very small sample I have here of the 2016 William LaRue Weller. And guys, if you go looking online, and I'll have to get you the, uh, the uh, proof and everything down in the description below, this particular Weller is one of, if not the highest rated William LaRue Wellers. Even if you go back into like the way back, this one is up there if not the number one so this is special this is an incredible whiskey shout out to my uncle Kenneth for providing me we'll call it about half an ounce uh, so pretty you know good enough to get a nice idea of this and let you know if this is truly legendary or not full disclosure I have tasted a little nip of this one time before um, but I, this is definitely a larger uh, a larger amount and with this super high proof, we're going to put a decent amount of water in here, and we're going to find out what the deal is. So let's go. Whew. All right. Up front, you know you're getting near hazmat. It is big, intense, uh, super sweet, heavy alcohol, and a huge wallop of spice. I never think of Weller's as super spicy, uh, but I have had some full proofs that we're definitely getting into the spicy realm. Uh, maybe it's more of a barrel char than actual rice spice, uh, but this one is definitely giving me rice spice notes. Again, maybe it's leather and tobacco coming up from the uh, the barrel, uh, but wow, big. Uh, you're getting red fruits, not necessarily your um, classic Buffalo Trace cherries. Uh, maybe getting into like a cranberry, maybe, oh goodness, I mean, it's just kind of generic berry somewhere between a strawberry, cranberry, um, but kind of more just generic red fruit. That alcohol, the spice, there is a nice mellow like cigar tobacco note there. Um, nice oak, very clean. I mean, uh, it's classic Buffalo Trace clean, but with that really nice rye spice, uh, you're starting to think rye breads. You're starting to think kind of even Christmassy notes. Uh, you know, maybe some... That's where I need Mike here for uh, for notes. I mean, it's not quite cinnamon. Um, ginger. You're, yeah, maybe ginger snaps almost coming in here. Oh, man. That is... That is beautiful, guys. Really nice. The alcohol is starting to fade and letting me get a little bit more. It's still biting the nose and the tongue a little bit. And I mean it, like it's actually coming through my nose and even getting the back of my tongue a little bit. It's that intense. Oh, yeah. Beautiful sweetness. Oh, man. I mean, just... Oh, and there's that caramel. Yeah, yeah. It's really melty caramel in there, too, with all those spices. All right, let's give it just a little sip, and then we'll put some water in here. Yeah, hey, apologies, guys. I'm sure I should have edited more of this out. Oh, man. Let me one more little sip. Mm. It's everything you get on the nose, 
but this is much more tobacco leafy. Really heavy tobacco leaves. Um, less fruity, more spice, but a very like neutral spice. It's not super like intense in the spice notes. It's just it's a more subdued and mellowed spice. Really interesting. Really complex. And yet at the same time, it's it's fairly simple. I mean, it's really only doing a few things um, that you need to focus on. There's more to it, don't get me wrong, but it's really the sweetness, the way the spice plays, and then that oak tobacco overlay, which already sounds fairly complicated for your average bourbon, but we are in legendary status bourbon here, so give this a second for the water to get in there, but again, don't have a lot left. Ooh, interesting. It's almost starting to give a little like barrel char smoke note coming through. It's still really clean, uh, very candied. Um, you're almost starting to get into like candy corn, but think more real corn and not the waxy kind of nasty like kid stuff. But again, it's in that realm. Ah, some slight chocolate notes are sneaking out of there now. Yeah, like, um, imagine like Nestle, like, uh, quick hot chocolate, where they maybe tweaked it to be a little higher cocoa, just a little bit more darker chocolate notes, but not still kind of more on the milk chocolate side. Maybe a peppermint patty, uh, not a peppermint patty, maybe, it's very subtle, it's, it's not as, um, it's not a York peppermint patty, but it's, it's some kind of slightly peppered, peppermint thing. Yeah, again, inviting, clean, easy. Everything you want on a, you know, Buffalo Trace style bourbon. But everything's amped up here. Everything went to 11. Some things went to 12. Spinal Tap would be proud of this whiskey. Oh, man, beautiful, beautiful. That smoke and tobacco really coming through now. I am starting to pick up a slight aspartame note probably coming from the oak. Wonderful whiskey, but water is sort of hashing out some flaws, some weaknesses. It's not quite the wow whiskey that at full cast strength it is. I think there's a real huge wow factor there that I think is masking a few, I don't want to say off notes, but not legendary notes. I mean, again, this is this is legendary stuff here. Let me, get, let me just finish this off for you guys. Let me uh, put my thoughts together. I'm, I, I've got a range of scores here, and unfortunately, I wish I had another half ounce or two to... Yeah, two ounces would be great. <laughs> Okay, here's where I'm at. The alcohol, when it's at its full intensity, gives it the perception of being an oily whiskey. But adding water, I, I don't think this actual distillate is super oily. The high alcohol gives it that feeling because it just creates that feeling on your mouth. It's actually a little bit more drying and thin with a high alcohol content. So the mouthfeel, I mean, it went from being legendary, neat, to a very well done, but thinner than I was thinking. So I'm going to take it down just a notch for that. The flavors are excellent here. I mean, I'm nitpicking to find that slight aspartame, oak kind of thing that's going on here. Man, I mean, really good. Uh, score's going to be a challenge here, guys, because, again... I just really haven't had the time to really sit back with a proper pour of this one. Uh, but my, my... Apologies, guys. Camera died on me here. Ran out of memory. So real quick, I'm giving this a 91. My initial thoughts were, 
the water brought down the oiliness and that should count against it. But as I went back and forth in my head, I decided that this is a whiskey meant to be consumed neat. And that's why it gets a 91 because the intensity, the explosion in the mouth, that just wow factor deserves the 91. Um, wow. Thank you. Thank you to my uncle and thanks to Buffalo Trace for putting out a real hitter right here. Uh, if you guys have had a chance to try this 2016 edition, once again, let me know. And until next time, guys, hopefully Mike's back and happy drinking. Cheers.